Hello and welcome to WTO Forum. Today's topic, the WTO's decision-making process. Reaching consensus among 153 members on 20 topics, as members are trying to do in the Doha round, is a seriously difficult undertaking. Many people have put forward the idea that perhaps this, this decision-making process should be reformed, be made more efficient. Others argue that by having the full membership fully behind an agreement, these agreements have greater legitimacy and credibility. With us today, two experts on this topic, Guillermo Valles, the uh, Uruguay's ambassador to the WTO and the UN, and Simon Evanet, professor of international trade and development at St. Gallen University here in Switzerland. Gentlemen, welcome. Welcome. Guillermo, could we start with you, please? Yes, well, yes, Keith, I, I agree that uh, this is uh, one of the biggest uh, topics we have, decision-making WTO 153 members by consensus. And, and by the way, not only 20 uh, topics, I think it's a little bit more than that. But frankly, uh, I think the single undertaking has helped us, at least now, to, to get up to the point we are. Uh, by the way, single undertaking and uh, decision making could be discussed later on. Now we have to finalize the Doha round. Uh, single undertaking has provided us also the opportunity to actually get into the, into the questions uh, that are really uh, calling for the session. Reform of agriculture policy, for example. Uh, I do believe that if it was not for the single undertaking, we wouldn't have been in a position to uh, construct on the so-called built-in agenda, the agenda that we inherited from the Uruguay round, which is precisely the continuation of uh, agricultural uh, um, uh, policy reform. What has helped us uh, getting into, into the negotiation of further reform of agriculture, particularly in developed uh, countries, is precisely the single undertaking, the possibility of having some balance, some other issues in which we could get uh, a, a more uh, balanced outcome and, and therefore uh, pursuing uh, our objectives of, of, uh, of reform. So single undertaking, it's difficult. Of course, decision-making by 153 members, it is extremely difficult. But these are matters to be resolved in the future. Now we have to finalize the round. Simon, are these your thoughts as well? I would tend to agree. I mean, I believe that the World Trade Organization should live by the first of those words, world. It should be an organization which is dominated by and, and controlled by its members, and it shouldn't be dominated by us, any small subgroup of members. So having a rule which insists on consensus and unanimity brings everybody to the table and insists on their consent an agreement it, for something to go forward. Also, the idea that nothing is agreed until everything is agreed, that other principle we have for decision making here, is crucial for making sure that there's enough of different, different topics on the table to be negotiated, which can generate these large bargains which help take the global economic governance forward. So this principle of consensus, it may sound cumbersome, it may sound very difficult, but it's important for uh, uh, soliciting the right amount of participation from all the major uh, players, or in fact, from all the players in the, in the world economy. It is the world's trade organization. It's not a subset of the world's trade organization. The challenge of course, is that not everybody in the world has the same objectives and ideas. And while they, that's, uh, this, tend, this type of system works well when everybody can put lots of different items that they want on the negotiating table, there's no guarantee uh, that everybody uh, or people can come to a consensus about what the outcome should be. And the challenge we've had is that this heterogeneity leads to sometimes for delay, sometimes for issues being abandoned. Think of the Singapore issues of trade and competition, trade and investment and uh, leads people to ask the question, perhaps there could be alternatives which somehow respect the principle of participation, the important WTO principle of not discriminating against your trading partners, and yet allow some countries uh, members to go forward. And these proposals, which some people refer to either as plurilateral agreements or critical mass agreements, are things which we're going, to, I think, are worthy of further examination 
after the Doha round is completed. I'm full in full agreement that we need to complete the Doha round to fi finalize this important international initiative, especially at a time of such financial uncertainty and, and lack of confidence in the business sector. We need to accomplish that. But once we've done that, let's think about how we can maintain the principles of participation, uh, consensus, non-discrimination, yet uh, allow the diverse WTO membership perhaps to move, to move ahead at different speeds. But would an a la carte approach be one that might in some way put at risk the whole notion of a world trade organization, as Simon says, Guillermo? Uh, I, I, I don't think myself, I don't think that that would put at risk the, the, the global sort of representation. But uh, I, I think it could make, uh, in some sense, uh, things more difficult. Take, let, let's see one example. Uh, the case of fisheries subsidies, uh, it's, it's under <laughs> my uh, chairmanship uh, as, 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 as chair of rules. This is part of the mandate. We wouldn't be addressing uh, subsidies and, and the issue of overfishing and overcapacity if it was not for the single undertaking, mm. it, if it was not for the need to have further balances in, in the in the uh, in the agenda we are addressing, I would I would agree with that. The, the value of the single undertaking is that it uh, facilitates some trade offs across often very difficult issues, and we've seen some very difficult ones in the Doha round. Unfortunately, been able to make progress on some of them as well. The question then is whether there's another logical possibility that there could be some issues which uh, one doesn't need to have as many trade offs across with other subject matters, or could go ahead on their own. Um, one might wonder whether or not the trade facilitation negotiations could have gone ahead on their own, given the level of goodwill and consensus that appears to have emerged in that area, and given the progress that has been made, then it, 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 we might have, at the beginning of this negotiation, allowed that to go forward uh, uh, outside of the single undertaking and still made as much progress. So I think we have to accept that there are going to be some issues we need to put in to a single undertaking because they are very difficult, and there might be some issues from time to time which could proceed on their own, in which case we'd have to think carefully about how to structure an initiative to do that. I, I would agree, Simon. Look, uh, and that has been happening to a certain extent. Look, one, one good example of a sort of an early harvest, the mechanism of transparency to, to report on, on the uh, FTAs, the free trade areas or uh, regional trade agreements uh, that are, are taking place. We have agreed that by consensus by 153 members, and we have adopted on, only, of, of course, on a temporary basis. But there is some sense that uh, certain issues that are good for all uh, could be, uh, if, if they are uh, agreed upon, they could be adopted by the membership, notwithstanding the fact that other issues, like, for example, uh, NAMA or agriculture are still uh, pending of, of agreement. Uh, on the contrary, uh, the reduction, I would say, of, of, the, of, the, of the single undertaking. We have seen in Cancun the, uh, that certain issues that were or originally being negotiated, like uh, trade and investment, uh, trade and competition, were sort of left out. So there is an adaptation. It's not that rigid, the mm -hmm. system. Uh, there is a, an element of, of, of uh, functionalism, I would say, that uh, helps helps uh, keeping the principle, but at the same time being realistic about what is achievable at the right uh, time. I, I mean, I, I think that's right. I would take the argument a step further and think we have to be careful about some of the sensitivities involved. Um, a number of countries will be reluctant to see some negotiations go forward unless there are assurances that at the end of them they would be treated no worse than the other parties involved. That sounds uh, very reasonable, but it is a fear that one would have to overcome. There are also a number of uh, logistical things you have to work out, uh, how countries can part participate uh, in meetings on these uh, types of negotiations without uh, signing up to the final result. And the, There are things to work through, but I take the general point uh, that you make is that the, the decision-making uh, possibilities uh, at the WTO are perhaps much more flexible and, and wider in scope than many people appreciate, and that this type of uh, flexibility and creativity needs to be applied, I think, a bit more in the future than it has been done, has done in the past. Guillermo, your final thoughts? Well, indeed, first, we will have to uh, conclude this round. 
maybe that that uh, won't be done uh, this year. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's it's important, and it's not uh, it's 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 not uh, little what we already have in, on the table. Mm. Uh, the sort of semi uh, agreement that we have on the table refer uh, to to, to um, uh, tariff reductions and and, and uh, uh, non agricultural products, the reduction of uh, of the uh, uh, subsidies, domestic subsidies, the elimination of uh, of export subsidies uh, for agricultural products. That's that's not a a, 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 a small package. Mm -hmm. We have to conclude this. Uh, we will have to f perhaps uh, wait for the right alignment of the stars, the political uh, atmosphere we, we need out there for, for reaching uh, uh, an agreement, a global agreement. But that is possible, and I say it with, uh, with the experience of, of uh, five years being here. Mm. That is possible, that is achievable. Then we, have, we will have to get into a new agenda, different agenda, which will include, of course, environmental uh, concerns that uh, all governments and, and people have. And we will have, of, of course, to address how to adapt the institution to that agenda as well. Simon, you have the last word. I, I would like to say that uh, the world faces a lot of economic and other international challenges. The single undertaking has been very useful in developing a wide body of international and economic rules. But we have learnt, I think, both the pros and the cons of that during this, during this last round. After we have concluded this round, and I, do, uh, I also concur that it should be uh, a priority, we should, I think, need to think again about how the decision-making uh, alternatives at the WTO can be aligned to the different important international economic objectives and challenges that we faced, whether they be in trade in the environment, trade in container security, trade in food prices, many areas where I think governments are expecting a response uh, from the WTO and its members, and, and this is uh, how this, I think, will evolve over time. But again, we have an interesting menu of uh, decision-making alternatives which we need to explore in greater depth. Uh, in the future. Simon Evanet, Guillermo Valles, many thanks to you both and many thanks to you for watching WTO Forum.